high. Some students, understandably, find it difficult to associate the different spaces of the skull and how they interconnect and where they are, because it's a difficult thing to do. For example, some people think that this hole leads into the cranial cavity. It doesn't. A topic for another day, maybe. What I want to talk about today is how a tooth infection can pass into the brain and be very dangerous. Oh, the anatomy side of things, that's what this is about, anatomy. So we're probably going to be using a bit of existing anatomy knowledge to work this out. But we've got to go from here to in there. And we're a bacteria or something. Um, this isn't something that's common, but it is something that's very dangerous, so it does need to be recognised when it happens so that treatment can happen. Um, really, okay, so what we're thinking about is we're thinking about an, maybe an upper molar, but certainly an upper tooth. And the upper teeth are in the maxilla. And in the maxilla, in here, there's a maxillary sinus on either side, a space within the bone there. I've got a real skull that we can see this on. If I shine a light up here, you can just about see the light coming through The maxilla is not a solid bone. It has a very three-dimensional shape here, but there's a sinus inside the maxilla, and that sinus opens into the nasal cavity, and it's lined with mucosa, and it's innervated by the trigeminal nerve. So um, pain from this region will be felt as facial pain over the maxilla, right? There, there it is. And note how the bone between the maxillary sinus and the orbit is super thin. So the orbit and the maxillary sinus are right next to each other. Here is another way of looking at this. Here are the upper teeth. Here's the maxillary sinus, and there's the orbit. Look at how these are arranged in the face, in the head. So, uh, a tooth abscess, an infection of an upper tooth in the maxilla, or dental work, um, a root canal. Some dentists have pushed teeth up into the maxillary sinus, but can you see how the teeth are intimately related with the maxillary sinus? They're not very far away, there's not a lot of bone there. It's likely there's less bone here than you think. Um, so if an infection from the tooth passes into the maxillary sinus, that will give, you know, facial pain here. Um, and that's a nice warm space for bacteria to, to grow and develop in. Now the, the veins, of the maxillary sinus drain into uh, the pterygoid venous plexus. That's um, a set of veins in the deep face that are draining much of the deep face. Here's the trick. Um, the pterygoid venous plexus is linked to a lot of, a lot of veins and a lot of spaces in the, uh, in the face. And the orbit is nearby. The Ophthalmic veins, so the superior and inferior ophthalmic veins within the orbit, will actually drain into the orbit, uh, into the cranial cavity, and into the cavernous sinus, one of the dural venous sinuses inside the cranial cavity. So upper teeth, maxillary sinus, orbit, pterygoid venous plexus. Here, right, so we're going to go here. Here, right, that's the same spot. This is where we find the, the cavernous sinus. Um, if the infection then passes to the cavernous sinus, 
it's likely to cause the formation of the thrombus, a clot. Um, blood flow through the cavernous sinus will be limited, which means that um, the cavernous sinus being a venous structure is likely to expand, dilate. And through here, we have a number of cranial nerves passing. We have the internal carotid artery passing through here, which is supplying blood to a significant portion of the cerebrum. Um, the eye. As I just said, the veins of the eye are draining to the cavernous venous sinus. If blood cannot pass through the cavernous venous sinus, then the eye, the orbit, is going to start to swell. So you'll see redness and swelling in the orbit. Um, so if you're linking together these things, there's an infection, right? So, and this isn't, I mean, we're talking, we're using the tooth as an example, but if somebody's had a facial infection, maxillary sinus pain, swelling of the orbit, fever, cranial nerve signs, this is where you go to, you worry about um, infection in the cavernous sinus. Sure, it's rare, what is it, like four in a million or something like that, cases per year. Um, it's rare, but it's significant. And if there's a headache, the headache is probably gonna be anterior. Now, there aren't any veins in the dural venous sinuses. So once the infection gets into the cavernous sinus, it can spread to the other sinuses. It can spread to the cerebral veins. So this can become meningitis. This can become a cerebral abscess. This can, like I say, compress the internal carotid artery. It could even, if you really think about it, um, a thrombus could pass through the dural venous sinuses, they drain through the internal jugular vein, that would run back to the heart, through the heart, to the lungs, that could even result in a pulmonary embolus. Sure, this is anatomy we're describing here, but this isn't just theoretical anatomy, these are things that happen and have been described. Let's go back to my original aim, cranial cavity, anterior, there's the face, so, this is where we find the cavernous sinus. Then we go to the face. That's where we find the cavernous sinus. That's the internal carotid artery again there. Cavernous sinus, orbit, maxillary sinus, pterygoid venous plexus is linking all of these things, upper teeth. That's what I want you to be able to visualize in the face, those spaces and how close they are. Okay, so that's how the anatomy of an infection in an upper tooth can pass into the cranial cavity. That's the sort of thing you need to watch out for um, because like I say, while it's rare, if you do recognize that anatomy, recognize those symptoms, link it all up, you can make a big difference to that, that patient's life and that patient's chances of survival and uh, future morbidity. Okay, little bit of anatomy. See you next week.